So I was at one of the places I have this morning and I woke to some noises of bins and little slight noises. Even in the middle of a excellent dream or anything like that, I have the uncanny ability of deciphering emergency or urgent noises outside from neutral noises like planes, cars and other stuff. How I do it, God knows, but I'm asleep, I'm enjoying my dream and I can just sense something in my environment that is notable or noteworthy as opposed to just cars and other things. And that's when the dream stops and I'm like, there's someone outside. And then I said to myself, okay, option one, barricade the door, pack everything, go berserk. Or option two, fuck it, just slowly pack everything. If the person opens the door, just deal with them in a civilized manner. Because it's a place that's about to get demolished. Yes, there's water and hot water and electricity there and everything. And it's a modern, it's a, sorry, it's a semi-mansion. But the fucking place is going to get demolished. So, I'll just let them come upstairs. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. And lo and behold, they opened the door to my room. <laughs> I had the urge to go, Hello! I'm the new resident here! Hi! But I didn't, because they'd have probably thought I was a nut job. But called the cops. So I just said, Hey, mate. I'm homeless. I don't mean don't mean any harm. And the bloke just froze and looked at me like, "What the fuck is going on?" And he goes, "That's that's fine." And then I, I started speaking to him, and I can be very persuasive. I am a good talker. Does that mean I don't tell the truth? Well, I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. Just fuck. <laughs> People who are shit talkers generally lie. Hey, how about that? Let's see. See the irony there, shit talker? <laughs> you're a lot, you're, you're, when you're a shit talker, you're a shit talker, as it's colloquially known as. But if you're actually a bad talker, shit talker, you're also prone to bullshitting because you don't know what you're saying. You, you must be trying to invent something. So, no, I, I am a very good talker. I am very persuasive. Oh, I, I don't hide that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And that, that skills, that, uh, talking skill is probably what gets me out of trouble all the time but again does that mean does that make it a bad thing no only an idiot would uh, deduct that and so yeah i certainly use my persuasive skills or my nice charming skills but it's it was honest it doesn't mean it's not honest which is my point so i was diffusing any potential hostilities not that there were any and he was just straight to it no no mate, you can stay here you can stay here at the end of it, he was sure I could stay there. He even gave me four weeks to stay there. Fuck. Fuck the... the... <laughs> I forgot to fucking semi-mansion for four weeks. Uh, not that I'm going to stay there. I've got other plans, but... Oh, fuck. That is funny shit. So he was about... Uh, the, old, the older bloke was about 61... Between 61 and 64... I would put his age bracket. Technically, you, you're supposed to say 60, 65. But I think it's between 61 and 64. And the bloke that was a little younger than him, I presume he was younger than him, is probably between the age bracket of 56 and 59. Although, again, he's supposed to say 55 to 60. Uh, so they were a good 30 years older than me. But it doesn't matter. But we're all blokes. And they were calm about it. So they were... They were they weren't your wanker Caucasian men, not even close. They were your gentlemen, or the one I was speaking to at least, was the, was the gentleman Caucasian type of bloke. The bloke I really like to talk to. So he was very cool about it. He was even sure that I was I can stay there for four weeks. It even sounded as if he wasn't trying to get in my way. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to measure around here. Is that, you know, as he was about to say, is that all right? <laughs> Fuck off. Next thing in, I'll be asking him for rent money. Oh, fuck, that's funny. So by the end of it, he was sure that he he didn't want to get in my way, and he just he was there to measure a few things. And he was also that I could stay there for four weeks. Fucking legend. See that the point the point of all this is 
uh, see, I'm not going to put this in my Pope Urban YouTube series channel because yeah, it's not it's not technical knowledge and it's not part of the course. But it would be go uh, good to slot this into the survival psychology part because it just goes to show that in a homeless situation, you don't need to jump out of your skin, jump out the window, you know. Def people skills will help a lot of the time. Even in other situations that aren't homelessness, even war zones and other things, bartering skills, uh, when you turn a hostile situation into a business opportunity for the other person, which creates more of a even environment rather than hostile and we need to eliminate this person, it's, oh shit, this person may have something to give us. So You've always got to know how to do it the right way though. It's easier said than done. It, it, you know, you see a lot of those movies where they try that sort of stuff and then it always ends up pear-shaped to the person trying because the person can apparently see through them and see what they're trying to do, but there is a way to do it where they can't see what you're trying to do. But it's it's not dishonest either. So, in a in a homeless situation, it's easy because there's it's there's no hostility. No, there's no. It's not a war zone. It's just a matter of mate. This is I'm I'm homeless. I thought there was nobody here. Please, I'll, I'm happy to leave if you if you want me to leave. No, 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 no stay, <laughs> stay, mate. <laughs> oh fuck. No, um, but in a other in another situation, like I said, a war zone, etc., it may be more volatile. People may want your space. People may want your goods. There's a lot of things that may go on. So you've just got to be very particular. You've got to be very careful at how you maneuver around in those situations. You got to try and turn it into a business opportunity for the other person, but without them understanding you're doing that, and as if you were going to do that anyway, sort of thing. Anyway, that's that's not for the that's that's not for the survival psychology thing. Although I'd love to put it there, but I may do something upon those lines in future on that channel. But fuck it, this morning certainly was a test of my negotiation skills. And look, you'll always get those people who are hard negotiation. They're just going to do it on purpose. That doesn't make you a bad negotiator. So let's just say I come across an enemy, and I try and smooth talk him, or I try and or just get out of the situation, or defuse the situation. And they won't have a bar of it. Does that make me a? Does that mean those skills are redundant? Absolutely not. Fuck no. They make them more relevant. So you, you've just got to. It's one of those things. It's a sign, like the scientific process. Just because it doesn't work once, just because it doesn't work a million times, it doesn't mean it's not absolutely true. You've just got to apply it at the right time. So that's. It was a matter of those ones. Although in this instance, you're probably going to get it more right than not. It's not very often you're going to come across somebody who sees you in an abandoned place about to be knocked down and then they suddenly start doing Jackie Chan and go, get the fuck out of here yeah! and start chopping you in the fucking head and kicking you but nothing like that uh, so at worst most people are just going to go excuse me you shouldn't be here please get out they're very rarely going to be hostile very rarely even going to call the police because it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's about to be knocked down and there's nothing in the fucking place to steal but this bloke was more level-headed and because I approached him in that... Because I synced with his general Caucasian... Or his his uh, advanced Caucasian propensity because he was that type of gentleman. He was a North Shore type of bloke, an educated bloke. Because I synced to that. Do you get what I mean? Because I synced to that level without uh, dismissing how I am, without being a different character. Because I synced to that level... He immediately appreciated that I meant no harm, that I was there just to do exactly as I said, even if I delivered it in that way. So, and my point is, at the end of it, not only did I diffuse the situation, there probably wasn't one to begin with anyway, but not only was the situation diffused, fuck, he didn't want to get in my way. He was even telling me what he was doing there. And he gave me the place for four weeks. <laughs> what a fucking champion. So it just goes to show that good attitude will always get you further than a piss poor attitude. Look, there are times where you've got to stamp your feet, you've got to you know, press buttons, and you've got to be firm. I'm <laughs> when I need to be one of those things. People know I can be exactly that, and look, I don't like saying the greatest, but you get what I mean. I can be very firm, but I, think I hardly am. The last time I behaved like that was, yeah, there you have it, back in 2014. Other than that, that's very rare for me to have to do that. You know, every I might have those 
times every now and again where I need to do that, where, where it is my way and that's it. I do I definitely do that every now and again, but not all the time as I did in 2014. So generally speaking, a good attitude, a level head, a calm propensity, sinking to the person and appreciating their perspective, as well as active listening, will always get you further than saying, Oh, I want this place! Oh, fuck! <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how people behave. Or we'll fucking start, you know, chuck everything in the bag and bolt through him, knock him over and run out of the house. It's not going to get you anywhere. There's no point. No point. Even in, like I said, a, a very hostile situation, that may be counterproductive. So you've got to, you've always got to balance your options and take the best one. Um, I could have barricaded that door. I could have done many things, but there was something in me saying, fuck it. Fuck it, let them come through. Look, worst case scenario, it turns into a Jackie Chan fight. Unless they're armed, I'm going to win. But I'm, I'm not going to let it get to that anyway. The, the most I'll do is manhandle them and not let them move their limbs. I have enough strength to do that to 99% of men. So, <laughs> but it didn't come to that. No, I didn't want it to come to that. And it hardly ever does because, as I said, I have a good attitude. I have a calm demeanor. Men who understand that don't, are, like, are very like-minded. I will, I will say this. 99% of men are of the same mind as I am, if not nearly 100. But most men don't know how to bring it out. Most men don't know how to tap into it. So that's how it always turns into a bad situation. So then you get the people with that rare ability, like myself, who are very persuasive, who can nut, tickle some nuts if they need to. Although, like as I said in my last video, I'm not the best nut tickler. But if I need to, I can do it. <laughs> um, so I, I know how to tap into that I know how to sink to the level of another man And say listen mate, There's no dramas here there's Absolutely no dramas So let's just call that a day And move on But you know, even better That bloke fucking gave me the house for four weeks What a pity though know, Because I'm, I don't I don't plan on going back there for a while If again I've got a whole array of things to do That ensure that I have places to stay for at least a year I'm taking my urban survival to the next level because I'm not getting work, I'm not getting paid center link. So I've got to look at myself in the long term, not just the short term. That's just, that's sad, you know, like, not sad as in him, his suggestion, but to just worry about the next week and then have that place gone and not look, after, look at all the other weeks ahead. That's very bad form, that's very bad planning. So that must be the architect in me. So for me, I've got a plan where I'm going to execute and it's going to almost certainly ensure that I have places to stay with hot water and electricity for the next year or two. So it's a it's a very solid plan. Um, I've got it on my phone. I've got, it, I've got it in a few places. Actually, I think it's just in my phone. But anyway, the point is, I know it off my heart. Uh, so I'm going to execute that plan. And once that plan's executed... I can pretty much move freely and start focusing on work again. So I won't be able to focus on work in the next week or two as I'd like to. Oh, I really haven't anyway because I've had to fucking just worry about food, place, food, place, shower, food, place. Just one after another. You don't get much time to work as you'd like to. But once I execute this, I should be able to focus on work and pay some fucking bills. Jesus Christ. So I'll get there. I'll get there. I always do. I always fucking do. And... The point is, you get there with a calm attitude, like I exercised today. So, for all you hotheads, for all you alpha male blokes, you don't have to be a fucking, you don't have to be a ragehead to be an alpha male bloke. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I can guarantee you, I'll always, you know, forget about me being strong. Forget about me and my physical attributes. Even if I was five foot six, even if I was five foot three, you know, I can guarantee you I would go in there and vicious any bloke, even one that's seven foot tall. I'm just that type of person, if I need to. And if you question that, I wouldn't question that because I had that mentality when I was a fucking four or five year old kid. I used to fight kids that were fucking twice, three times my age. So that physical propensity, that physical physicality of myself grew out of that mentality, grew out of that ballsy propensity as a child. 
I was never the biggest kid, but I was always solid, strong, and I just grew that way. So I can be like that. My point is, I am that type of alpha bloke, but you don't wear it all the time. You don't need to carry on like a Muppet. You just use it when it's required, like those ADL days or when you have to be assertive. You don't... It gets you nowhere in life. And as, as I demonstrate today, it got me a fucking place for four weeks because I didn't try to, you know, put my chest down and go, hey, I'm fucking homeless, or leave me alone, or anything like that. It's not going to get me anywhere. It's not going to get anyone anywhere, and it shouldn't. So, I, this is why I'd like to put it on my fucking Pope Urban YouTube channel because to cap this, a good attitude in any survival situation will get you out of trouble. And in, in all life situations. So, have a good attitude. And to anybody, even the most hostile cunt, when push comes to shove, if hostilities occur, you treat it accordingly. But other than that, you should always have the better attitude. Have that diffuse, diffuse, uh, diffusing capability. It's, there's nothing better.